Praise the Lord. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. Hallelujah. Did everybody come to worship today? We come to praise our risen king. Death could not hold him down. Hallelujah. Seated in majesty. Hallelujah. You know, I just want to thank him. Let us pray. Our Father, our Heavenly Father, Creator and Maker of all mankind and every living thing. Father, I just want to come this morning to give your name praises not just because of what you've done but most of all because of who you are thank you God for salvation a way back home thank you for your grace and mercy that keeps us day by day. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed over 2,000 years ago that our sins may be forgiven. Forgive us, Father, if we have done anything out of your will. Put us back on the right path. Clean us up and make us right for service. Thank you for everyone that has gathered here in this place as one body and one voice to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. We want to ask that you have your way today. We know that you're already moving. We know that you're already answering prayers. We know that you're already healing the sick. You're already giving sight to the blind. You're already restoring those back in their families. We know that you're already working on the children. You're working on the parents. You're working on the uncles and aunties and grandparents. You're working on the family, God. And we thank you. You're working on the community. Father, we know you are doing these things and we say thank you. No matter what the enemy might try to show us and discourage us from having faith and trusting in you, death could not hold you down. And if that couldn't hold you, there is nothing, nothing that can hold you even now. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for the peace. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the kindness. Thank you, Father, how you are working in us and through us to reach someone, to tell them about your love, to tell them about Jesus died, to tell them that there's a way out of every situation that we face in life. Use us, oh God, as your vessels to bring your name glory and honor in the earth. Have your way today. Bless the speaker of the hour. Bless the word that it go forth and not return unto you void. It is like a seed that is planted. That in due season, it will bring forth fruit. Help us today, God. Help us today, Father. 
as we lift up your mighty and wonderful name. Father, we pray a special prayer for those who are bereaving, those who are going through sickness and surgery. God, we know that you hear and answer prayer. Comfort them right now. Let them hear or feel your presence, God, knowing that you know about it and that you will take care of the situation and bring it to pass. However you do it, you will do it well. Thank you, Father. Bless us and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Could everybody stand and join us in the singing of this morning's hymn? The hymn number is 404, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. Come on, put your hands together like this. How many of you came to praise the name of the Lord this morning? Time is filled with swift transition. No other can move and stand. Fill your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to His hand. God's unchanging hand.
though he's unchanging? Did you come to praise an unchanging God this morning? Did you come to give glory to an unchanging God this morning? Come on and shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Lord God. We give thanks to our glorious Father. We give thanks. We give thanks this morning for his goodness, for his kindness, for his mercy, for his everlasting favor. We give thanks. If you know this song, come on and sing it with me. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. For He is worthy. He's worthy. For He is good. Yes, He is good. For He is worthy. He's worthy. For He is good. Yes, He is good. Right. 
Good morning, everybody. 
Good morning, everybody. I know you all are looking at me like, who is this new person up here? <laughs> My name is right there, and it's not spelled correctly. I wanted to cut the music down because you all are looking at me like I'm the only one that has something to be grateful for this morning. Y'all sitting down, y'all bopping y'all heads, y'all patting y'all feet, y'all clapping y'all hands. But does anybody in here have something to be grateful for this morning? We've come a long way over the last two years. And people that were sitting next to you five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago are not sitting here with you. The Lord has blessed each and every one of us. And I don't know about you, but this week in particular, this week in particular has been a trying trying week for me at my job in my family with my health I did not get a good report from the doctor but I'm standing here praising the name of my God because his word says by his stripes I'm already healed so no matter what the doctor said I've got victory in Jesus I don't know about you somebody out here got a pink slip this week somebody out here's child lost their mind this week You've got something that you need God to do. And we were created in the image and the likeness of God our Father. When God wanted things to change in the world, what did he say? He said, let there be. He said, let there be, and it was. Can you imagine if God said, let there be sickness over every single one of us? Would it happen? He speaks positive over his children, and he wants us to do the same thing. So he led us to sing this song this morning because some of you out here need to start confessing some things over your life, over your workplace, over your office, over your body, over your marriage, over your bank account, over your car, over your children, over every aspect of your life. So that's why we're singing this song this morning because we're going to be like God. We're going to create with our words. We're going to change our confession and then change what's going on in the realm of this earth. Hallelujah. So I'm going back to that part where it says, let your, let your, let the glory of God, let the spirit of God, whatever area you can think of right now in your mind, bring it to the forefront and say, let your spirit, God, change that situation let your power God change that situation let your glory rise in that area of my life and from today on I'm going to believe that it is done in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus so if you all want to sing that part with me I'm just gonna say it like this say let your glory let it rise let your glory let it rise let your power let it rise let your your power let it rise let your healing let it rise let your your healing let it rise let your 
Good morning, Saints. My name is Gail Walker, and I am here to do the welcome. So on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan Sr., our First Lady Regina, our clergy, and all of our members and officers, we welcome you. If we have any visitors, would you please stand or remain standing until you have been fully welcomed? And to all of our virtual visitors, if you would please just chat right in the chat, visitors, all of those visiting with us virtually. So, you know, to me, residences, apartments, and certainly houses of worship all have a spirit. I personally don't know how anyone commits to any of those without walking into the space and feeling that spirit. I've been a house hunter, I've been an apartment hunter, and I've been the seeker of a new church. And with each of those, I had to walk in and feel it for myself before I committed. And one apartment complex I went to, I just walked into the rental office and it was like, mm -mm, nope, not gonna work, not gonna work. So our church right now is working through a series where we are focusing and centering it on the fruit of the spirit. And that is from Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And it is my prayer today that each of you, that God would magnify in each of you all of the fruit of the Spirit. If you already have a church home, that's fine. Come on back and worship anytime. But if you are seeking a church home, consider Cornerstone. Be blessed and be welcome. Welcome, welcome. morning cornerstone family um, i have a couple of announcements for you guys this morning uh, first is we have sunday school because it's second sunday so any school age children please go downstairs uh, we have a wonderful morning plan for you guys with some great snacks um, if no one goes downstairs a few sunday school teachers will be breaking their diets um, so we kind of need the kids to go downstairs um, second announcement as most of you guys are aware we have the blood drive coming up on the 29th of this month. Um, it will be right here in the church's parking lot and we need 40 people to sign up. Um, right now we have 16, so we need 24 more people to sign up. Um, speaking of Deacon Bruce, I myself will sign up today. So now we have 17, so we only need 23 more people to sign up before next Sunday. Um, just to, you know, give back to the community, donate blood right here in the church's parking lot. Um, so if anyone would like to sign up, please contact Deacon Bruce or see myself after service. Thank you, guys. Good morning, everyone. My name is Melody Haywood, and I'm here to make an announcement about our upcoming um, 30th anniversary banquet. First, I'm going to give praise to God because we're going to be able to have the banquet. And what a joyous time. Yes, we've had some delays, but delay does not mean denial. It means that it's still going to happen. It's still going to be spectacular. Most of all, we have something to give praise about. We have stood for 30 years, and we're expecting to have a great celebration. So that's the praise and the thanks to our Lord. 
We thank our pastor for standing with us and our first lady and everybody that has contributed to this. We thank you for your patience, but some things were not in our control. God knows when the timing is right and the time is getting ready to be right. Now I'm gonna give you a few facts. I want you to clear your head, pay close attention because I'm gonna say this twice. Um, I've missed a few announcements in my day. I trail off and I'm praising the Lord in my mind and I'm thinking about dinner and then I come back and I've missed the whole announcement. So I want you to stay with me. We need you to please go ahead and register now. Um, this isn't a potluck dinner and I'm gonna even read the menu to you very quickly. We have to get everybody signed up as soon as possible so we have a correct count. We don't wanna waste food, but we wanna have plenty so that this is a joyous celebration. At the end of the service, we will have two people out in the hallway that will um, allow you to register. Even if you decide to pay by GiveLify, by check, and or give cash, you still have to register so we have the count and we make sure we have the tables prepared for you. So this is very important. We need you to do this as soon as possible. That is the very important part. Now, because I know we are a church that loves food, I want you to know that for $10, you're gonna get a garden salad, dinner rolls, hickory smoked green beans, vegetable medley, rice pilaf, baked macaroni and cheese, rotisserie chicken, garlic and herb baked salmon, iced tea with lemon, lemonade, and delicious cakes are coming. In addition, there are some people that are coming from far and wide to meet with us. I know we still have some concerns, rightfully so. COVID and other viruses are still going on, but we go many places. We have to ask for God's protection, and I believe he's gonna protect us. We haven't had a wide outbreak of COVID in this church. We're still practicing safety. The seats are only six people to a table. We will be distanced from each other. We do not have to hug. But imagine the glory of being together, to smile, to honor our church, to honor the Lord, and to see one another. It's been two years since we've been able to do this. And this is a momentous celebration, and I want to celebrate with you. And there will be something on this menu. This is why I read it. Even on your diet, you can diet that day if you choose. And if you decide to break it, enjoy it, and come back the next day and diet again. God bless. Thank you, Sister Melody, for encouraging us to be present for the celebration of our 30 years. Let's give the Lord some praise for 30 years of faithfulness. And as a matter of fact, if you want, you can give the Lord some praise for um, the breath you just took. That means you are alive. You are alive. And we praise God. You know, we don't take for granted that he woke us up this morning and gave us a reasonable portion of our health and strength to gather together and to worship. So I'm just grateful to God for the privilege of being present with you today. As many of you know, we had some health challenges in our family last week. And thank God for your prayers and God's goodness and grace. We're here today. And we thank God for sustaining and keeping us. I want to thank our guest musician for blessing us this morning with her gift her voice, her anointing, and we'll continue to pray God's blessings over the report that you have received regarding your health. We know that God is able, as you said, to let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the healing of the Lord rise among us. Let the grace of the Lord rise among us, and all of us need grace, and we're grateful to God's word tells us that God's grace is sufficient. So we're great, grateful for his grace and praying that his grace would be sufficient in your life and all of our lives as we continue this faith journey. There's a few things I just wanted to share with you as we've been celebrating this year, 30 years, we're grateful to, what, to God for what he has done to bring us to where we are in this place in our journey. But we're also anticipating that God is not through with us yet. God is not through with us yet. There are many 
uh, plans that God has for this ministry, and we're praying that God will use each of us to be a part of making this ministry continue to be all that God has ordained it to be. He's allowed you to be a part of this ministry because there's something that you can contribute, and we're going to have an opportunity to meet on this coming Thursday, especially the leadership, but we're opening it up to any member who would like to be a part as we explore how to move forward in the next phase of the life of Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. I'm always excited uh, when I share with people that God is doing a new thing as he's taking us through a transition. We've been transitioning since the very first day we opened our doors. It's been a transition of how God is using this ministry to touch the lives of so many people. Have your life been touched by this ministry? You've been blessed by this ministry. I've been blessed by this ministry. There are so many who have been blessed as a result of this ministry, many times the blessings that we see are not necessarily manifested in a worship experience. It could be the support that we give to a family that may be in need. It could be the encouragement that we provide for a student who's wrestling or struggling with something. It could be a visit to a hospital. It could be sitting and being along with someone who may be in a time of bereavement and grief. So whatever the reason or the opportunity that God gives for us to be a blessing, we want to continue to do that. So on this coming Thursday, if you'd like to be a part of the next move of this ministry, it'll be at 630 and the information will be in the uh, in the email. So you'll be able to get the email to tune in to the meeting that we will have on this coming Thursday. Again, it's the leadership. We've begun this process back in the earlier part of the year, and we're going to be resuming this process as we continue to move forward. Grateful to God for the uh, presentation that Sister Melody made with regard to our anniversary. We are encouraging you to get your reservations in as quickly as possible. Um, they asked if we should have the, a cost that's reflective of the number of years that we are celebrating, 30. And um, it was my desire that we would keep it at a cost that would be affordable to all of our members. And should anyone have a challenge meeting that cost, we will certainly have some people who will be willing to assist to make sure. So do not allow the cost to be a deterrent to celebrating with us as we gather together for a luncheon immediately following the service on, uh, the, on the fifth Sunday. Also, uh, we're excited about the work that the ladies of uh, prayer and fellowship are undergoing, taking a trip to David, Sight and Sound. I was told there's only two more tickets left and two more seats left. So if you haven't already signed up, they have a wonderful time each time they go. Uh, you wanna make sure that you sign up and get your seat. You can contact Sister Siobhan Williams or you can call the office to get your ticket. Again, there's only a couple of them left. We're gonna continue to pray for each other. Uh, I believe that the prayer of the righteous availeth much. I know that the prayer of the righteous developed month. I've been the recipient of the prayers of the righteous. Um, I've also extended prayers to God for those of you who may be in need, and I've seen how God has moved in ways that sometimes surpass our own understanding. So we're going to continue to ask you to pray for our members who have had deaths in their family, especially those who have had deaths in their family. I want to thank Sister Gail for extending those words of welcome to all of our visitors today. We're grateful to you for being with us today. And uh, we're asking that you continue to pray for Sister Gail. She's uh, going to be having the services for her mother. And we know that God's grace is going to be sufficient. We also have some of our other members who have health concerns as that information is sent out to the entire congregation by email each week. We thank Sister Felicia for keeping us informed with regard to the prayer concerns and needs that we have. We're going to continue to worship God and giving. How many of you are grateful to God that we are able to give? going to ask if you wouldn't mind to rest on your feet. Our tithing affirmation together, because God's word declares that the first portion, one-tenth of our income, already belongs to him, we bring our tithes to the church and present it unto the Lord in loving and cheerful obedience. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are extremely grateful for the many blessings that you give to us. We thank you for the blessing of life. We thank you for the blessing of health. And we thank you for the blessing of the financial resources that you entrust to us. And you ask of us and you provide for us guidance as to how to be good stewards of all that you entrust us with. And so we bring our tithe to the church 
praying that you will use it in a way that will advance this ministry and the mission for which you've called us. We thank you for those who support this ministry faithfully week after week and month after month. And we're asking that you continue to bless those who give as your word instructs us to give. For you said you love a cheerful giver, so we're grateful for those who give regularly and cheerfully. We pray your richest blessings upon the gift as well as the giver. And we ask you to use these gifts to bring glory to your name and advance your kingdom of the gospel in this community and in this world. We ask these in all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, you'll be able to support this ministry. You may be seated uh, with your tithes and your offering. For those of you who may be worshiping with us online, we are grateful for you to be with us, uh, for your presence here today. We would encourage you to support this ministry through the Givelify app. We're Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church in Wilmington, Delaware. It's important that you do identify that this is Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church located in Wilmington, Delaware, and you can make your offering that way. We're also supporting so many of the crises and uh, disasters that take place around the world. We do that sometimes. Uh, we had a meeting on Friday, and we were sharing how many of the congregate, many members in the congregation do not know how your contributions help those who are in crises. So those who may be suffering from hurricanes or floods or disasters, uh, we have a committee that's designed to look at supporting those particular disasters and needs. And then your resources help us to reach out and extend the love of the gospel of Jesus Christ through support that's needed in those times when it's needed most. So you can do that through the Givelify app. Also, you can mail your offering in to us and at the end of the worship service, those who are present, you will have an opportunity to deposit your gifts, your offering into the baskets that the trustees will hold at the doors as we enter, as we exit the worship experience today. We're going to continue worshiping the Lord. How many of you are glad to be here today? Let us stand for our scripture, please. And the word became flesh. This morning our scripture is found in Nehemiah, the eighth chapter. Take a little more time for people to find it. Nehemiah. Eighth chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. Amen. Yeah. Then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra the priest, and scribe, and the Levites, who were interpreting for the people, said to them, don't mourn or weep on such a day as this, for today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. For the people had all been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with the people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy for the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's in the Word. Sing 
of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. of the goodness of God. I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness, the goodness of God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. look back over my life and I begin to think things over I can truly say all my life God has been faithful and he's been so good to me I'm sure you can say that that's your testimony that God has been so good to us Is it Franchon? Fran Franchon? Franchon, thank you. Thank you for ministering to us today. God bless you. Also, I want to uh, thank Dr. Dennery for standing in my stead last week. She did a phenomenal job. Thank you, Dr. Dennery. <laughs> celebrated a birthday last week. <laughs> Preached the Word of God, taught the Word of God on Wednesday. Phenomenal way to celebrate the gift of life that God has given to you and to share the gifts that He has given to you with the kingdom of God. God bless you. It's time for us to share a word and to receive a word. And I'm praying that your heart is fertile for the seed of God to be sown into your life. There is a word that the Lord has placed upon my heart to share with you. And my prayer is that the word would go forth and accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. So let us pray. Father, I'm grateful to stand in this place today. I'm humbled knowing that it is all because of your grace. And I'm excited, dear God, that someone's life will be blessed and enriched because of the word that you have given to me to share today. Now, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation that is in my heart that it would be acceptable in thy sight you are my Lord our Lord you are our strength and you are our Redeemer it is in your name we pray and the people of God said amen from the prophetic book of Nehemiah, I would like to leave you with this topic. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So would you simply deposit that in your hearing and also in your heart and your spirit as you repeat after me the joy of the Lord is my strength for those of you who are visiting with us as mentioned in the welcome we have been working through a series called the habit of the spirit or habits of the spirit and one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. 
And so this week we've been focusing in on joy. I must tell you that when the book of Nehemiah began, Nehemiah finds himself in a pickle. <laughs> He's in a tough situation. Some of you know the story how Nehemiah has received some news that was undesirable news. And somehow between Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4, and Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, Nehemiah makes the journey from sadness to joy. And for those of you who may be here today desiring to know the route that he has taken, I'm intending to share the path that Nehemiah took to get from Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4 to Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. So often we get excited about the joy of the Lord is my strength but we're not always aware of the journey that allows us to appreciate the joy of the Lord being our strength. And so Nehemiah hears some news in, in Nehemiah 1, and watch, it says, when I heard these words that I sat down and mourned, I sat down and mourned and fasted and prayed. Nehemiah has heard these words. What are the words that Nehemiah has heard? How many of you know that sometimes we know that God exists? You know that. God does exist. We, that's a part of our Christian or our uh, theological framework, that we know God exists. Most of us are here because we believe that God exists. We also have some history based off of the song we just finished singing and off of our own personal experiences that God not only exists, but God cares about us. We know that his goodness keeps running after us. We know that all of our lives, God has been good to us. But the truth is, there are those moments, those, those seasons, those situations, those circumstances that sometimes grip us. And we have to deal with these situations. Often these are situations of loss. Loss can be challenging. As a matter of fact, Loss can produce a lot of different reactions in our lives. There, there is uh, the fear of loss. We have the fear of loss, and, and, and in order to prevent losing things, when you got out of your car and came into the church, you put the lock on your car. You don't want to lose anything in your car. There's, when we leave, we're going to have locks and alarms on this building. We, we have this fear of loss. There are laws, there's a commission. The January 6th commission has come into existence because there is a fear of the loss of democracy. And the reason that there is a fear of the loss of democracy is because the person who occupied the White House prior to our current president was not able to accept loss. There was a fear of loss. And, and so rather than acknowledging fear, sometimes of the fear of loss, sometimes we deny the loss. There are times when loss can devastate us. There are different reactions. Sometimes when we experience loss or anticipate loss, we go into a depression. And that's where we find Nehemiah. Nehemiah is in a state of depression. He starts off in depression, but somehow he moves from depression and he takes a path from depression into a place of joy. For he's able to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
How does he, how does he move from this? Now, you have to understand that all depression is not the same. Some of you probably came in today with some degree of depression. There, there's all kinds of depression. There's affective depression. There's behavioral uh, depression. There's cognitive depression. There's all different sorts of depression. Depression sometimes can make you want to end your life as Elijah did when he was depressed. Lord, it's enough. Just take my life. Jeremiah had a kind of depression where he was unmotivated. God called him to do a, a, an assignment to preach the word, but he became so depressed, so discouraged that he says, I'm not preaching anymore. Nothing could motivate Jeremiah to continue preaching except somehow God's spirit got on the inside and he said, I can't sit still anymore. I don't want to do this. But th something is on the inside and it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Jonah had a different kind of depression. He jumps into the ship and gets down to the bottom of the ship. It was a depression that he didn't want to be bothered with anybody. He went down into the bottom and ran as far away as he could from anyone who knew him. Depression is different for all of us. Yeah, yeah. Nehemiah is wrestling with a kind of depression that may be called somatic because it prevented him from sleeping and from eating. And over the course of four months, it caused him to change the way he looked. He was depressed. You ever been to that place where you just didn't want to eat? You, you couldn't sleep? That nothing was was really able to motivate you, to get you going. Uh, you didn't want to be around anybody. You just wanted to be alone. Uh, th this is not new. This is the, 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 the prophets wrestled with depression. We, we see it all the time. And, and here in this text, I'm not a psychologist, but it looks to me that Nehemiah is depressed. It says, when I heard these words that I sat down and mourned, and I fasted and prayed and wept. The first thing that Nehemiah does in route from his depression to the place of declaring the joy of the Lord is my strength is that he sat down. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to just sit still. You know why you have to sit still? Because sitting still can allow you to tap into all of the dimensions of your existence. Sometimes we get excited and we start moving and we're only operating off of the emotional part of our existence. Then, then there are other times where we get so cognitive that we don't even really want to ex feel or experience what we're going through. We just kind of put it into our logical mind. We can recite the scriptures. Well, uh, the, the weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. But that's, that's true. That's true. Weeping does endure for a night. But let me tell you, I know that scripture. But when I sat with my father, and it was time for my father to make his transition, all of that scripture went out the window. I'm, I'm, I'm his pastor. I know. I know. I preach it all the time. I'm, I'm with him. But the moment that his time was up on this earth, my emotions took over. So you got to sit still sometimes to tap into what's happening here emotionally, what's happening here in my mind, what's happening in my body. Sometimes your body sweats and it's giving you signals. It's getting tired. It's, it's getting fatigued. And you are so far off into your spirituality that you're not paying attention to your body. Nehemiah sat still still so that he could tune in to all that was going on in his life. He's got a plush job. He's the cup bearer. He's sitting next to the king. He tastes everything. He walks with the king. He's in the king's court. He's got it going on. But while he was out, he heard someone speaking the same language from his hometown. And he says, hey, I heard you talking about what's going on in Jerusalem. What's happening there? And they gave him some news that he did not want to hear. He said, the walls are torn down. There is no structure. There, there is no real active, vibrant life taking place and Nehemiah heard it and the first thing he did was he sat still 
Now, 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 the second thing he does after he sits still is the text says, he mourned and he fasted and he prayed. If you ever find yourself wrestling with loss, and all of us will wrestle with some kind of loss. Sometimes it's personal loss. Sometimes it's national loss. Sometimes it's the loss of a status. Sometimes it's the loss of a relationship. Sometimes it's political loss. But whenever you find yourself wrestling with loss, if you can get this process down, it will help you to work through it. He first sat down. He sat still. And then he prayed. I need you to listen. When Nehemiah prayed, he didn't just start praying. Actually, the text says that when I heard these, these words, I sat down and mourned, I, or I wept. And it, and it dawned on me that I, I wanted to dig in a little bit deeper to what was going on into this weeping. So I started doing some study, and I, and I found out that there were some uh, social scientists who wanted to find out why is weeping such a universal experience whenever there is loss. So, so what they thought was perhaps the reason that weeping is such a universal experience is that weeping actually pulls on our biological bodies to produce something that helps us to overcome the pain of loss, something like a, a hormone, a cortisol, or something such as that. So, so what they did was they had a group, a sample group, and they allowed them to watch a very sad movie. And Half of the group started crying, the other half didn't. They took the saliva of the ones who were crying and they took the saliva of the ones who were not crying to see if the ones who were crying actually had more cortisol in their, in their saliva, in their system. Come to find out, it didn't matter if they cried or didn't, it didn't matter. But to their surprise, what they discovered is that weeping actually regulated their breathing. Think about it. Weeping regulated their breathing. Weeping. Am I right about it? Now think about this. Every person who comes out of the womb, the first thing they must do is why? Because crying regulates breathing. Nehemiah sat still and the first thing he did was he prayed and wept. Ah, oh, somebody know where I'm going here. Somebody know where I'm going here. He sat still and he prayed and he got his breathing together. <laughs> he started to inhale. But it wasn't like a <laughs> There you go. A deep one. A deep one in and a deep one out. A deep one in and a deep one out until it got regulated. So if you want to go from this place of loss and depression, sit still. Pray. Inhale. And then watch what happens. Nehemiah started fasting and praying. But here's what you've got to understand is that when Nehemiah started praying, he was praying based off of 
the word of God. Father, forgive us, for we have sinned against you. How do you know that you have sinned against God if you do not know his word? So often we sin against God because we don't know his word. When we are not willing to act, uh, conduct ourselves based off of his word, we mess up. And so here is Nehemiah working through his depression, working through his grief, working through his loss by first sitting still, by praying, by inhaling, and by recognizing what is taking place in the word of God. And then once he got a hold of the word of God on the inside, he inquired about what he should do. It's, it's, it's here. Look, chapter 2. After the king sees Nehemiah, he says, Nehemiah, something's going on. You are just not yourself. Right. Nehemiah had to come to terms and recognize that, yes, yes, king, there's, I've got some bad news. And the king says, well, what can I do? Now, now listen. Chapter 2, verse 4 says, with a prayer to the God of of heaven I replied so we know that Nehemiah is praying the king asked well how can I help you I replied if it please the king and if you are pleased with me your servant send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried how did he know to answer the king with that reply unless he had inquired of God what to do? If you find yourself in a situation where the news is not good and it hits you, in your emotions. I said there's a path. <laughs> you know, a path. It's, it's really a pathos. Ooh. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Pathos. That, that's, that's the emotional journey. But the emotional journey has to be rooted in the Logos. Ooh. The Logos is the word. So he's in the word, but now the word is going to affect his ethos. Ah, uh, the path dictated by the logos will determine his behavior, which is his ethos. So now Jeremiah, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Nehemiah is in a position where he's gotten the king's attention because of his situation, his depression. The king wants to help him and he answers the king as to how the king can help him. Send me back to Jerusalem so that I can do what? Rebuild the walls. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Can I, can I just give a prophetic word to the congregation? Since I'm up here preaching and I only got two more minutes left. It's easy to sit back and watch a situation deteriorate and identify that the situation is deteriorating. That's easy. It's easy to say we need some young folks. Just say ouch. But it takes the habit of the spirit to 
identify what the issue is and inquire of God through his spirit what you can do to make a difference. Can I get an amen? Can I get a praise the Lord? Can I get an ouch? So Jeremiah goes from cup builder to wall builder. I'm um, cup bearer to wall builder because he prayed and he inquired of God what to do. Now, big, big, now, now, I don't have time to tell you how he went in and all of the opposition and struggles that he had as he was building the wall. But after the wall got built, there was another priest there and he, they, people said, we want to know what the word of God tells us. So they heard the word of God. And just like some of you sit in here, the word of God just like said, struck them right in the heart. All they could say was, ouch. Well, that's what they were saying. They were saying, ouch. This hurts. We've been off the mark. We've been so comfortable that we haven't really asked God how we can get out of our comfort zone to do what God has called us to do. Jeremiah seeing the reaction of the people and he says, wait a minute. The word of God is not designed to make you feel guilty. That's a social construct. That's not why the word of God is written. The word of God is written that you might have life and life more abundantly. No, this is not a time of mourning. This is not a time of finger pointing. This is a time of rejoicing because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now watch, watch this. Um, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hmm. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, God. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, my. Mm. Oh, boy. My gladness. Is not. An emotional roller coaster. I'm not glad today. And sad tomorrow. Mm -mm. If you look at the word strength. The word strength is really a fortress. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just like Nehemiah was willing to put in the work to build the fortress. We have to be willing to put in the work to build the fortress. Mm. All right, let me just. Uh, the black eagle said, let me put it where the goats can get it. That's what he said. Let me, let me put it where the goats can get it. Here is where the goats can get it. Joy is actually a state of mind where we live. That wasn't quite it. 
Are, are we getting closer? In other words, if today I wake up and I get some bad news, the news might touch my emotions, but I'm living in joy. Are you hearing? Are we getting closer? In other words, I dwell in joy. That means that on any given moment, I'm already in joy. I can't tell you to go to Cornerstone right now. Why can't I tell you to go to Cornerstone right now? Because I, I said it. Why can't I tell you to go to Cornerstone right now? Because you're already here. I don't have to tell you to get excited because you're already here. I don't have to tell you to praise the Lord because you're already there. I don't have to tell you to give God some thanks because you're already there. I don't have to tell you to put your burdens down because you're already there. It doesn't matter what else happens around you because you are dwelling in joy. You're always already there. And that's when you have your strength when you're always already in a spirit of joy. So when we say the habit of the spirit is joy, that means you gotta learn how to sit still. You gotta learn how to pray. You gotta learn how to inhale. You gotta learn how to read the word. You gotta learn how to inquire. You gotta learn how to give thanks. And once you practice that, you are paving the pathway from depression into joy and is paved with prayer and obedience and the word of God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I wanted to, I, th I thought about it this morning, and I thought about illustrating how it works. But I thought about it this morning, and I didn't have my illustration, but I'm, I'm, exp I'm going to explain it to you. Anybody eat oranges? Like oranges? So, I had an orange, and I experimented with everything. So, I, I took the orange. I had two oranges. Well, I had two oranges, and I put one on the counter, and I rolled it around and squeezed it just a little bit. I didn't bust it. I just rolled it around, and it kept getting softer and softer. And then all of a sudden, I could kind of smell the aroma coming out. I said, man, this is, this is good. And I rolled it around. And the other one, I didn't roll around at all. And I sliced into the one that I rolled around, and I sliced into the other one. And I tasted them. And the one that I didn't roll around, I tasted it was sweet. And the one that I rolled around and, and cut it, it was sweet, tur. The one that I didn't roll around was sweet. But the one that I rolled around was sweet, tur. And sometimes we want to have some joy. But we don't want to be rolled around. We don't want to be squeezed. But Nehemiah didn't get to Nehemiah 810 without Nehemiah 4. When he was working as hard as he could to build a wall and somebody came by and told him he was wasting his time.
God had to roll him around. Then he had opposition on the inside. God just rolled him around. Oh, God. Listen. Here's your takeaway. There is a path from loss and sadness and depression. From there to joy. And here's the, here's, here's the key. You know, we, my family, we, we were watching a movie the uh, night before last. It was a good movie, too. It was Tyler Perry's new movie, The Jasmine's Blues. That's good. That's a good one, isn't it? We were watching this movie, and, you know, I have learned how to watch movies with my family. So we don't ever watch a, a movie all the way through. They have to say, put it on pause, put it on pause. Like, why well, we got to pause it? Because I got to make my prediction. This going to happen next. All right, we, we don't never get to the whole movie. We got to stop the movie. We got to do the predictions and all of that. And then, then we go through a little bit further. Then we got to pause it again. All right, no, 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 no. That prediction wasn't right. This one, it's going to be this. But we will never know what the end's going to be if we don't press play. Sometimes God hits the pause button en route to joy. And you think the pause button is the end of the movie. No, the pause button is just a moment for you to regroup and remember how to practice the habit of the spirit. Oh man, I, I, I think you got, you have it, you, you're good. There is a path from sadness to loss to depression to where? To joy. And joy is not an emotion, but it is what? It's a fortress. It's a place where you live. It's like your house. That's your address. Where do you live, joy? But you just got some mail in the house. But this, this house is called joy. I live in joy. But weeping might endure. No, but joy. I live here in joy. This is, this is my resident. My new resident is joy. Because when I have joy, the devil can't ever defeat me. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I live in joy. have to get in my car nobody don't have to draw me I'm already there I already, it's on the inside this joy I have the world can't give it to me and the world can't take it away I live in joy that's my fortress rest of your feet Why, 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 why is this so important? Because here's, here's the reason. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. And life more abundantly. You are going to have experiences that may cause you to get thrown off of balance. I have had them. You have had them. But if you understand that through sitting still and praying, sometimes it's a voluntary inhale, sometimes it's involuntary through weeping, but it's still an inhale. And you get that word of God, whatever word is applicable to your situation, 
if the only scripture you ever knew was the joy of the Lord is my strength, you'd be all right. If you just take that one, you'd be all right. You already know way too many more scriptures than you ever would need to use. But if you just take one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you just take that scripture, whatever one you want, and you inquire as to how God wants you to apply that scripture in whatever the situation is, I promise you, you will emerge from that experience with thanksgiving in your heart. You just practice it. Practice it. Every day, every single day. The habit of the Spirit. I told you there will never be a situation in, that will happen in your life over which you can't overcome if you practice the habit of the Spirit. So if you're here today and, and, and you're wrestling with some situation that you thought was too big for you to handle, I want you to know today God has finished erecting the wall. And he's inviting you to come in, to dwell in this place, the fortress. It's a, it's a living place. If you, if you find the address, you knock on the door and he invites you in. He will open the door and you can live in that place eternally. It's going to be your strength. It will sustain you in every situation in life. If you are here today and you have never experienced that kind of joy, where God is inviting you to be in relationship with him, I want to extend an invitation for you to get to know Jesus in that way. In that way. It's a, it's a constant growing process, but in that way. If you don't know him as your savior, in that way. I want to invite you, just raise your hand. It's, it's very, very simple. It's very simple, very simple. All right. Here's the second call. This is a call to connect with this ministry. It's through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to lead you to do this. But if the Holy Spirit is moving upon your heart, tugging at your heart to connect with this ministry, we are opening our doors and extending an invitation for you to connect with us in that way. Are you here? Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Wherever you are, just raise your hand. All right. And now, this is the final call. This is a call to action for those of you who desire to have the key to the fortress and you can enter and access it any time you desire just raise your hand you want the key to the fortress key to the fortress all right now here's the way this works we have to all be on the same spirit okay I'm gonna say this prayer but we have to be in the same spirit the Holy Spirit connecting with me is the Holy, same Holy Spirit that's connected with you. You got it? It's the same Holy Spirit. If you open up and unmute the channel of the flow of the Holy Spirit in this moment, the Holy Spirit will flow to you. Now, I'm going to show you how that works. You can hear me now, correct? You can hear me? That's because there is a wire that's connected to this microphone to that soundboard. And as long as that line is open, you can hear the sound. But just for experimentation, don't I ever do this again, sound people. I want, I want you to mute my microphone. The electricity is still flowing. The only issue is it got muted from the source. Are you hearing? If you unmute the channel in this moment, you gain access to the key eternally. And the only way 
you can ever exit from that place of joy is if you choose to mute the channel. You always have the choice and you can mute the channel if you choose. But if you don't mute the channel, the joy will always flow consistently through your, as long as you pay the bill. Now all the wires are connected, but if we don't pay the bill, they're gonna shut it off. You know what the bill is? The habit of the spirit. You have to pay the bill. And it's open. Father, you have heard our desire. It is what we truly want, is to dwell eternally in the fortress of your joy. Thank you for creating this magnificent place for us and providing us with unlimited access into this fortress. May it forever be our strength and our gladness. In Jesus' name, may it be done. Let it be. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. We're going to prepare now for our benediction. And I'm going to request your grace and pardon to allow me to be excused immediately following the benediction. And if you choose not to extend that grace to me, I'm going to pray for you. Sister Taylor, good to see you. Yay. Let's give the Lord some praise. Who? Sister Lockett? Sister Doris Lockett? Sister Lockett. So good to see you. Brother Granville. I see Brother er uh, Esther, uh, Brother Percy and Sister Esther. God bless you. Welcome back. And also, who? Oh, the bass player. Hey, Brother Nick, how you doing, man? <laughs> Welcome aboard. Yeah. yeah. Brother John is building a team here. All right. So now do I have to just do the roll call? <laughs> okay, all right. All right. We're good? All right. You, we're, here, we're here. All right. And, and you got joy. And you got joy. All right. Okay. Go Phillies. Man, go, go Eagles, okay. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Let's look to the Lord. Oh, just finally, I want to say uh, one more time, I'm so glad that uh, you, our visitors are worshiping with us today. Ordinarily, I would kind of hang around, but I don't want to do that today. But I'm so glad that you came to worship with us, and we pray that in some way you have been enriched as a result of your time with us today. And if you ever have an opportunity to return and worship with us, please do. And for those of you who are online, who are streaming, we're grateful that God allowed you to connect with us through this medium as well. So may God's blessings continue to rich, rest richly upon each of you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the joy, the gladness. that you give to us. It is the place where we dwell. It is our strength. And we're grateful that you have enabled us unlimited 
full access every single second of our lives. Now I pray that you would bless each person under the sound of my voice. May the word penetrate every exterior barrier and find its way into the essence of the spirit that it might be a source of strength eternally from this day forward. We're grateful, God. Grateful, full of joy. For all that our ears have heard and what our eyes have seen and even what our hearts and spirits have felt. Bless us now and make us a blessing as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. And now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, domain and power, both now and forever. And all of God's children together said amen. God bless you. Go in I peace, love, and joy. over the enemy. Satan, you have to flee. I walk in victory. I have the victory over the enemy. Satan, you have to flee. I walk in victory. I have the victory over the enemy. Satan, you have to flee. I walk in victory. I have the victory over the enemy. Satan, you have to flee. Uh -huh. victory. I walk in victory. I walk in victory. I walk in victory. I have the victory over the enemy. Say that you have to flee. I walk in victory. I have the victory over the enemy. Say that you have to flee. I walk in victory. I walk in victory. I walk in victory. I walk in victory. I have the victory over the enemy. Say that you have to flee. I walk in victory. I walk in victory over the enemy. Say that you have to flee. I walk in victory.